There is something special about a trip out of Portsmouth Harbor and traveling to the famous Star Island. Star is home to the rustically unique hotel known as the Oceanic, where a simple island lifestyle and unique traditions have echoed for generations. This is a really unique, special place, um, and I think it's a place where people form um, lifelong friendships and um, tight-knit communities. Aravis Albert knows about life on Star Island. She is one of dozens who have come back to work here every summer, known as Pelicans. I've been a Pelican since 2015. Um, I found out about Star Island by attending one of the conferences. Um, and I can't get enough, I keep coming back. And this season, she came back as the island naturalist, running the Rutledge Marine Lab here. We are an educational facility. We have um, aquarium tanks here, um, and it gives us a little glimpse of um, what is all around us just below the surface of the water. So you might be wondering, where do they get the marine life to put inside the tanks? In some cases, it's volunteers. And we met up with one of them here on Star Island to see how the process works. The guy in the wetsuit is Louis Figueroa. I've been coming here since 2012. I probably did over 114 dives. It is a unique, special place. Lewis is a dive guide with aquatic specialties out of Merrimack, New Hampshire. In his free time, though... I help out as a volunteer diver uh, to the Rutledge Marine Lab, and what I do is I help uh, bring up some of the, the specimens, critters. I'm bringing up things that, uh, that you just can't quite get you know, free diving and snorkeling. It all started years ago when a boat engine fell into these waters off Star, and Lewis was asked to help retrieve it. And then that led to, hey, while you're here, can you uh, help, if you see anything that, that's good for the lab, it's like, sure. So we come out with some of my buddies, and, um, and that's how it, it all started. Since 2012, he and others have volunteered to take the scuba gear out to the island and collect marine samples for the Rutledge Marine Lab. They also bring in sea life for the tank displays at the Seacoast Science Center in Rye. Just under the surface of the, um, of the water, there's actually quite a you know, big diversity of animals. Robert Royer is senior aquarist at the Science Center. He says to collect those sea animals, they rely on volunteers like Lewis and local commercial boats too. We also have, you know, lobstermen, um, you know, different trawling boats. We kind of get, you know, some specimens from also. But it's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of different people that kind of help out. To see what a collection session is like, I suited up with Robert and Lewis in really thick wetsuits. We lugged the gear to a nearby sandy beach, and then we were ready to head into the frigid Atlantic. About 10 minutes in, we find something many don't know exist in New Hampshire waters. That little orange thing is soft coral. These particular bright colored life forms go by the ominous name of dead man's fingers. It kind of gets its name from 
a lot of times it's on the the substrate so on the bottom and it looks like you know fingers kind of coming up through the sand so that's how <laughs> that's how it got its name Dead Man's Fingers is one of several unusual life forms the volunteer divers have collected for the tanks, including the alien-like nudibranchs, or sea slugs, lumpfish, and colorful sea stars. Back in the water, we find plenty of crabs and lobsters, and several abandoned lobster traps on the bottom as well. On a nearby ledge, we found a bounty of sea urchins, and just above, the seafloor was covered in sea stars. It was incredible, there's a ton of life down there. I almost got attacked by a, a lobster, I think it was like 60 pounds. It was huge. Whew, you'd be amazed. Just underneath the water there. Water that only the hardiest species can survive in. It did get kind of cold today, so um, the max we went was about 50 feet, and it was also about 51 degrees, you know, at that depth. There's the, there's the flounder. The volunteers hope their work pays off inside the Rutledge lab, where kids and adults can learn about life many have never seen. Maybe try something new, like taste testing seaweed, or get up close to sea creatures usually only found in deep water. Yeah, so you see the eyes? <laughs> oh! <laughs> they love, that's why the kids love them. <laughs> Perhaps if these kids learn about what's underneath the surface, they'll continue to appreciate and protect the waters around New Hampshire for generations. A lot of kids come and they, they experience the, the lab, the touch tank, playing with the things that, that are really popular. They love uh, seeing scallops. They love looking at uh, hermit crabs and so on. Part of it is just really just turning people on to some of the things that are, that are unique to this area, unique to Star.